Hi, Vicky. How are you? Very well. Thank you so much, Vicky. This is great. <laughs> are you enjoying this green room? I am. And for some weird reason, I had deleted this a long time back. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just checking this uh, particular update, and it's really cool. The whole white, ah. the color palettes, and all, and also oh, yeah. the uh, I have um, done some of the demos just to check mm-hmm. the audio recording. It was fab. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, no, it seems quite interesting. You know, when I was just hopping on board, I was like, "Oh my god, this is something I have not discovered yet completely." Yeah. And, How? And you know, uh, <laughs> before you were, you joined in, there were four or five people who joined in to listen to the conversation. <laughs> What are so, you saying? Yes, so live audiences will be joining in. Also, I'm right now. I've uh, um, like uh, transported all to my Enco app, so they all okay. my people who are listening to it, they're also listening to it right now live. That is superb. That is superb. <laughs> But you know, for some strange reason, I can see your mic on mute over there. My mic? Huh? And I can hear you for sure. Oh, okay. I was also seeing your mic on mute for a certain time. But now oh. I think it's free. Yeah. Maybe there's a lag. Huh? Maybe must be. Must be. All right, guys. So we have Urvashi Jog in the house, and Urvashi yeah. is an ex-marketing professor. She's a mentor. She has held positions in international offices, student engagement. Someone who is trained in Bharat Natyam, who is into yoga and meditation, and right now she's a life and career coach working with a reputed organization. That's a brief I'm giving you about Avashi, but there are a lot of facets that we'll be talking about. Right, Avashi? <laughs> I'm sure that's so kind of you, Vicky. <laughs> sure, sure. Go on. So um I just want to mention that uh, thank you so much Urvashi for taking out your precious time because I know um the whole day you have been working you are uh, doing your career and your life coaching and people are connecting with you and you're creating a lot of impact in their life so we are going to have a very free flow kind of conversation just uh, feel free to whatever that you want to share your life journey how you got connected to this particular profession what's your why what's your how what's your what Awesome for sure I am so delighted to be here and Vicky you make it so much more comfortable I must say <laughs> so <laughs> thank you thank you so much please um, so the mic is yours the stage is yours all yours please go on <laughs> all right hey everyone uh, very good evening good morning and uh, wherever you are in any part of the world I hope you're safe and everybody is uh, you know happy I think that's more important today yeah <laughs> Uh, for sure you know um let me tell you this this entire title of uh, being a life coach being a career coach it sounds you know so um full of responsibilities and so much more and you know when you said that you know how did i actually get there mm-hmm. and what made me get there i'll tell yeah. you a very interesting scenario so going back into who i am essentially i've been a person who's always learned to uh, always loved learning learning more about people mm-hmm. about cultures about individuals and so much more like just a lot of it and fascinatingly i mean my entire life has always revolved around that we got a lot of opportunities to explore different cities different cultures so that was a whole lot of uh, interesting areas that i discovered mm-hmm. and that's when i realized that you know i am a kind of person who who loves listening to other people so you know mm-hmm. there are people who are like so called agony aunts sometimes but <laughs> i won't call myself that bad as much because for my friends i definitely was the one who would keep all the secrets and all that jazz but wow. um somewhere i was i never had a judgment about whatever they were saying Mm-hmm. So, you know, if they were in a particular situation and they had their own hardships that they were dealing with and the other person that they had their grudge against was also sharing their story with me and I'd be like, of course, I mean, with the resources he or she had, they did this and with the resources that he or she went through, this is what happened. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, it just sort of um, probably was instilled at a very early age. Um, and, and this is the, like which age you're talking about? I I'm talking about largely before before the 12th grade much much before so okay. start anywhere from the 6th till the 12th 
because we want you to start from the childhood wonderful you're doing that <laughs> <laughs> absolutely the baby urvashi <laughs> the baby me absolutely i you know before the 6th grade i was more of the bully <laughs> very oh, strict you were yeah i was oh, like man. I, so I might very... mute you in between i will do that <laughs> <laughs> by bully i was by you know okay so let me correct myself uh by bully i meant i mean that you know anyone who wasn't behaving properly mm-hmm. right who was unnecessarily making noise and mm-hmm. not doing the right thing i would just immediately go up and say listen this is not the way to behave so Once, you were like more uh, disciplined ha huh, you can say that that I mean, would I be like anybody that would be good. more euphemized we can say more euphemized <laughs> 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 yes, yes, yes. I would say so. <laughs> Because I don't know the tolerance towards uh, you know something like being rude to the other person. Why why would you do that? You know, that mm-hmm. person has done no harm to you. Why are you doing this? This is not right. So, I think that's what uh, I mean. I know I'm using a heavy word so, but yeah, for that reason I mean that you know there was just no tolerance there. And I said, "Listen, this is not the way things should be." And that's when I started sitting them down and telling them why you shouldn't be doing what you're doing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. be more kind and this and that you don't know what's going on in their house and blah 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 so mm-hmm. <laughs> imagine mm-hmm. till the 6th grade that was the journey and then 6 till 12th it became um you know a different uh, you know set of uh, experiences that led me to become more so the agony aunt um to to of course so the fact who so who was this person who made you aware that uh... try to look at uh, the different perspective that a person is going through don't just try to go and give them a piece of your mind first try mm-hmm. to understand where they're coming from who was that person ah my mother oh your mother wonderful yeah, so sure. she she uh, created that aspect of uh, looking at things from different perspectives right that's right that's right wonderful. and appreciating it mhm so yeah that's that's when it sort of uh, kicked in and um, yes after that of course the journey was different i learned to express myself because you know when you are the one listening to other people you don't necessarily pay attention to your own thoughts mm-hmm. and your own feelings right so mm-hmm. um i think post the 12th grade i started experiencing that phase and i started introspecting i started learning more about everyone uh, about everything about myself and um also expressed myself because somewhere i wasn't doing that i was just you know learning 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 and um when i started expressing uh it became it was you know i was getting positive reinforcement everywhere mm-hmm. i said are wow ye to <laughs> positive ho gaya mm-hmm. i did not expect it to but uh, and so slowly and gradually i stepped into my uh, the first phase of you know getting into a job and mm-hmm. it was obviously in the teaching profession at the undergraduate mm-hmm. and postgraduate level now automatically that role requires you to be some sort of a coach some sort mm-hmm. of a mentor mm-hmm. and um, strangely i was always the kind of person who connected but at the same time i was more like okay if i'm taking up this role i must be trained and you know there must be some training that i should mm-hmm. definitely undertake and what is that training and all of that so i was very inquisitive um in that space and uh, little did i know it just you know flew by quite easily and um, then i said okay somewhere i need to delve deep a little because here i am uh, associated with an organization and hence i'm you know i got to explore that bit uh why not give it a, a, a solid um, you know stamp there as well so that's when in 2019 I went in for my certification. Of mm-hmm. course, I have a long way to go with the ICF and all of that. Mm-hmm. But um, nonetheless, I am taking it a one baby step at a time. I don't want to rush into it unnecessarily, you know, without really getting into the depth of it. I'm mm-hmm. still exploring. I still call myself an explorer because I certainly feel that, you know, there is a lot that I need to perfect or a lot that I want to um discover and look at the new challenges before I step into the next phase so mm-hmm. that's where i am at the moment and that's how i got into this specific space wow that's so beautiful so i like if i have to see that journey of urvashi as a child someone who so when i'm doing that pictureization or visualization i can see you uh, rushing towards or running towards people who are trying to create some kind of uh, pandemonium and you're giving your peace of mind to them 
and then all of a sudden going through that transition where you're you're listening to people more you're you're reflecting on what they have they have gone through you start listening to them coaching them mentoring them and in the same process you start uh, improving your craft keep increasing your craft from a to b and you keep on reflecting on it and getting those learnings and keep on working on your skills your habits your behaviors all the things and overall your personality so that's that's wonderful that's beautiful i love that journey i think mm-hmm. every trainer every coach every mentor they all go through that journey it's beautiful yeah for sure so i just wanted to understand over she like uh, definitely you have talked about your whole timeline your whole childhood and how you entered into the corporate life how that transition happened how is urvashi now has something changed some obstacles some ordeals that you have gone through some new perspectives some new identities new personality whatever that you feel like sharing hmm oh la la of course of course i you know so it's like this let me again take you a little bit um into the younger me and then tell you what happened um so here i am an individual who has uh, who always you know was on the move with uh, mm-hmm. the, you know the family with my parents um, transferred and all of that and um, this happened quite early in my life so let's say i was born in vishakhapatnam right mm-hmm. after that we moved to calcutta right and then so everybody would always say that acha so you're from down south or you're from andhra or you're from uh, bengal and i'd be like okay so after that i went to bombay <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they would be utterly confused as to ye hai kahan ki you know where does she actually stay what does she call and, home at that time your accent your usage of words language everything changed right ha ah, you caught it bang on actually because mm-hmm. in calcutta is when things uh, started shaping up for um for me essentially because that's the time you start speaking i was very very small at that time and mm-hmm. prior to calcutta i was banaras that we were posted for quite a bit um and so yes so that time is when um you know my mom took it up as a challenge that okay she needs to get like a crash course in english hindi whatever it might be because you know mm-hmm. she's growing up and so yeah that was the first step and um, i i couldn't ask for anything better because you know calcutta is such a beautiful um, as as an education system they have they have a good solid foundation that they set for the child yeah so i i think that was a blessing for sure um thereafter of course um you know the fact that you were always on the move you already became very flexible and you know you would adapt to any culture any situation quite easily and then um of course once you grew up is when you saw that okay there are a lot of things that we've seen and i've seen it with my parents they had a whole lot of obstacles themselves and they handled it so beautifully mm-hmm. so i learned from that as well as i was growing up and um, that's when life happened <laughs> <laughs> and when life happened it happens in the most beautiful ways and it also takes you through and can have a little poetic and a little dramatic really? here <laughs> we would love that. <laughs> we we like uh, life coaches who go into poetry. <laughs> I know. <right? laughs> so you know, there's we always call it like the waves and the you know the troughs and the crests and all of mm-hmm. that that life gives you and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, the crests were beautifully crests, and then the troughs were even even wonderful. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to always go by this one saying that my parents always told me, and that is that learn you will. you will definitely learn you know whatever is right whatever is wrong however things need to be done it's better that you learn it from other other people and and seeing other situations mm-hmm. rather than go through it yourself because if you go through it yourself it's going to be quite hard so mm-hmm. you, you that's the basic uh, understanding so i used to always keep observing and you know keeping my eye on everything that okay if i do this i should be careful about that or that should be done because it looks like a good a uh, way to go go about things so at the time that uh, you know certain certain situations happened um is when and mind you this is actually before i got that certification huh mm-hmm. so <laughs> i went through all of a lot of a lot of things 
um and it's like this you know the, the bomb sort of hits you from every angle it doesn't give mm-hmm. you a particular space that okay yahan se main aa raha hu main utar se bhi aa sakta hu wo nahi batayega na mm-hmm. so your 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 sort of taking care of one battle and then the other one strikes and the third one strikes and the fourth one strikes mm-hmm. so at the end of it you're just doing one thing and that is keeping a smile on your face because if that's something that you don't do if you don't do that you are practically just another you know person just roaming around like a zombie mm-hmm. so um that's what i did and i said okay if if it, how hard could it be anyway right i just need to put up a smile on my face and go through with whatever is going on right everyone mm-hmm. around me will be happy i'll see them i'll be happy don't so, be right now i can feel that uh, whatever event that took um that shaped you in what you are you are thinking about them right now however you are reflecting and giving me a paraphrase version i can very strongly feel that right over oh, yes. <laughs> you there you go right <laughs> absolutely you know i'm literally you're right it's the you know the picture is vividly there very very clearly yes i i could feel that in your voice yeah <laughs> so that's what happens and um So that Maybe also makes us aware that Urvashi doesn't want to share those chunks of memories with us. Only the paraphrased, euphemized version, right? Very and now, nice. why should we delve deep into <laughs> things which are disturbing and all of that? Let's talk about the happy times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you something. You know, the learning that I uh, got out of this was definitely the fact that a nothing is impossible. Everything mm-hmm. can be. You know, if you're a good person, good things will happen to you, and just stay good, right? And second, it was that. Um, in you know however you may try and whatever you may do it might it does affect you it does affect you in many ways now you may put a smile on your face and move on but there is some unfinished business within that hasn't sort of you know got a closure if i can mm-hmm. say so mm-hmm. so you need to deal with that and you need to do something about it so that's what eventually i came to realize and uh, because it manifests in different ways you know physically it will start giving you these funny funny um so for me it was you know something called uh, urti care i don't even want to name it but anyway it was something like that or or you know some different kind of uh, things which you've never faced never known of and um, it does manifest in different ways and that's when i realized and i said i'm not stressed i don't have any stress because i'm smiling all the time and i'm mm-hmm. ensuring that everybody else around me is happy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so what's going on and but yeah that's what it does and that's why i keep emphasizing the fact that you know you need to talk you need to talk about it talk to your friend talk to somebody who um you trust somebody who will give you the right advice or even in your parents or your family whoever you're comfortable with talk you need to get it out of you this very interesting like how um you're talking about the fact that you know i i always feel that even if when we go through a lot of obstacles or deals in our life and when we are going through those positive patterns of thinking we become the wisdom self to ourselves in that particular moment and that also creates a lot of synapses uh, inside our neural networks and it creates those different different pathways that by default conditions and primes us to become extremely reflective which helps us uh, to understand the psyche or the personality of the people who are coming to us to gain mm-hmm. some perspective does it make yeah. sense yeah that that's true absolutely and you also i mean because you felt the in- intensity of it i mean it's like you know i'm going to go film me a little bit but uh, please bear with me <laughs> so, so poetry me. and films and making up so you know in adil hai mushkil and rockstar they say this one statement and that is to me you know you've not been able to sing well because tumhe dard nahi hai or you haven't gone through yeah. some pain in your life mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay which by the way i don't agree with but <laughs> but if um, if that were to be you know so, sort of uh, uh, taken as a parallel over here as well um you know what comes out is actually something else so like you said if we actually go through with it and we know of what the other person is going through because mm-hmm. we've been through that whole journey we can have a very sorted path that we could you know give for them but at the same time as a coach you're not giving a path you're helping them with the solutions taking and going with them 
in their mm-hmm. solution and their journey because it's everyone's journey is different so but yeah you're right it does help and do you sometimes feel that um, just to put ourselves in their shoes there might be some kind of emotional contagion and we might start uh, absorbing the energy that those people are feeling at a certain moment of time and we start vibrating at a similar frequency and energy with them and it might even hamper the uh, functioning of our own psyche has that ever happened which is called emotional contagion something on those lines yeah yeah definitely of course you do get there and you do feel somewhere that it's all getting to you yes of course uh, but that's when you know you you need to sort of um, draw the line somewhere for yourself uh mm-hmm. luckily it hasn't happened to me very intensely so mm-hmm. um, maybe uh, you know it's it's i don't know whether it's good or bad but yes it hasn't happened to that extent but yes somewhere you need to draw the line you need to sort of delve deep and like i always say fill in that positivity again so that you could take up the next one mm. wonderful so all these uh, motivational quotes that are coming from you i'm now feeling so motivated <laughs> 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 but i i wanted to ask you like obviously when you mentioned that there are certain uh, obstacles certain setbacks hiccups mm-hmm. that you have gone through i i wanted to understand something like because uh, normally people who go into teaching training coaching mentoring or any kind of uh, voice work they they themselves go through a lot of transitions in their own personality or persona mm-hmm. um someone who comes from a stage of being an introvert then being an ambivert then being an extrovert so has that transition happened for you do you feel that your voice has changed your personality has changed any attributes that you want to share yeah for sure for sure yes it has changed i mean so if i were to look back at maybe a decade ago more than a decade ago mm-hmm. um i was an individual whose voice was so soft you could barely hear her in a room right <laughs> so i you know even in school for that matter i would have to raise my hand and i would wait for my turn so patiently because i couldn't be like the rest of them who just be um ah, i have an answer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so but um uh yeah so in terms of the the volume uh of my voice for sure something that i remember the first time i stepped into the undergraduate batch uh of um uh, you know the marketing uh, course that i was teaching and it was very very interesting because theek hai presentations aap dete ho as a business student as a master student and everything you know in there at that time it's just about 10 minutes and then you're through but um this is a an entire hour that you need to spend and you're the only one who needs to sort of keep yeah. talking most of the time uh but having said that i mean uh, you know so my my situation was such that i would just keep quiet i would be one of those teachers who just keep quiet if things went really out of hand i would just keep quiet and I'd say okay when you're done let me know it's fine mm-hmm. you take 10 minutes you take 15 minutes i'm okay with it but i don't know that whole uh, look on my face would just sort of hush everyone up <laughs> and i wasn't being strict or anything but i think that was the only way i couldn't scream i couldn't do that duster wala thing on the table mm-hmm. you know that the bang on the table it just not me so i worked with the silence i said okay that's what i am i mean i can't open up so much or would pony tiger so might as well just go with what you have right mm-hmm. until of course um, i used to have four sessions back to back right and mm-hmm. that's when it just sort of went very easy very easily sort of blended me into this whole new um phase where i started my voice actually did open up mm-hmm. to what uh, i know of today i mean compared compared to what i was in school for mm-hmm. sure it did for sure and um, that's something that definitely changed um yeah. other than that i'm not sure if anything has changed from being an extrovert or an introvert um of course we all have our own little you know phases uh, where you know when you're in school you're you have your own phase where you're an extrovert and then you get into a little more like a you know quiet zone and all of that but i was always a people's person so i'm not really sure if i if i was ever an introvert introvert <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what will you like uh, call yourself an ambivert or an extrovert right now 
Oh, nice, nice. So according <laughs> to, <laughs> according to, let's go by the test, right? So I am an extrovert according to the test. So yeah, I would have <laughs> got myself according to the <laughs> test. <laughs> I mean, we. But, I think again. But do you feel that uh, people can be put into this category of either being an introvert or extrovert? Because as per the situation, the people, the behavior, the ecosystem, people always transition. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I, I don't feel that people should be given a, a fixed label. Variable itself means that you have a flexibility. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's what happens. You see your everyday life. You know, there'll be days where you're just like, okay, I just want to be by myself. I'm so in sync with nature and myself, and blah blah blah. The next day, you're like, okay, where are people? <laughs> I need to talk to people. <laughs> yeah, that's the transition of life. Like even right now, when pandemic is happening, yeah. there are certain times when you want to be with yourself. But now yeah. you are like, what is happening? I'm I'm in my room. I'm in my home. I need to go out and to have a conversation with people. That's one of the reason we go on to different different apps to have mm. conversation with people. to hmm. make us feel that yes we still have the power of the voice we still have the power of communication and thoughts and ideas hmm. and we are alive and we are breathing and we hmm. are alive and kicking and we want to listen to what people are trying to say and reflect back on that and trying to gain some new knowledge so i think that is that is the art of being a human because i yeah. always always believe that human beings means that you are in the process of becoming something that's why you are a being so you are mm. always in that constant process yeah absolutely 150% because you know if you and i always believe on one more thing and that is that if you can spend time with yourself now it might be for a few minutes in the day i'm not saying you know you need to spend the entire day with yourself or anything but in whatever time that you spend with yourself you have a positive time you know by just sort of contemplating or doing nothing you know sometimes just reading a book or just uh, actually thinking about anything under the sun you know that mm-hmm. okay what did i go through what was the day like or what are my feelings at the moment you know just just that much 5 minutes 10 minutes whatever and if you can have a good conversation with yourself you're definitely going to be a good person who everybody would like to talk to Yeah. or who everybody would like to interact with so if you are boring <laughs> with yourself then you will be boring <laughs> with others as well <laughs> like i think i i remember i think sadguru was mentioning this thing one that mm-hmm. um, if you don't enjoy your company you're in a bad company <laughs> change your <Yeah>. company <laughs> <laughs> go oh, and have yeah. conversations somewhere then Exactly right. But, but it's wonderful, uh, Urvashi, to have the this small conversation with you, small oh, but very impactful right. conversation where you shared your life's journey, how you uh, went through disciplining people into becoming a teacher by default, and working on yourself, working on your skills, your attitude, your behavior, your personality, and today you're a life and career coach, and you are going through that process of. still trying to understand that what is your why what is your how what is your what and how to keep on adding those um, those feathers in your cap and keep on increasing your craft it was wonderful very enlightening and thank you so much for doing this no no absolutely vicky i think you know you've literally sort of made me think and i love that <laughs> <laughs> on the parting note i would definitely have to say if uh, i were to define it it's all about you the why or you for me um yeah. you know whenever i speak of um anything i'm i'm always about the other person's feelings what is what are they going through and what are, are they doing okay and all of that so for me i think that's what god has made me for in this world and um if if i don't get to do good to people and and give them a you know positivity once in a day or how many ever times you know in whatever ways you know that uh, one can do um i think it would just be a life not spent correctly yeah so yeah exactly. a lot of compassion there and thank you and so I much think, i think being a trainer fun. being a coach rishi i think you will also second this that we actually start feeling that happiness or inner happiness deep within us when we are able to create some impact oh yes a hundred like I, i remember i remember i read that story the very beautiful story i think you you must be aware about that there is this small boy mm-hmm. who is gallivanting on the beach 
and he he's just throwing the starfish on the on the shore back into the ocean and the old man comes to him and he's like why are you doing he's like i'm giving her life back so he's <laughs> like how can you create an impact or difference in so many starfishes like because there are so many starfishes just look around the uh, the cor- corner just look in front there are so many starfishes how can you create that impact how can you create that difference in all their lives he just looked at the old man and he said that i created a difference in this one's life and now now i'm going for the second one now i'll go for the third one so you keep on taking that small step keep on creating those small bubbles of happiness deep within you and just Absolutely. keep on going on that journey of throwing all the starfishes back into the ocean and in that and process the small boy becomes the old man again <laughs> ah you see that right see that so, on this note i just want to mention uh, avashi it was wonderful having you here i hope you enjoyed the conversation it was a very f- uh, free flowing kind of a conversation whatever that comes to us i always believe in having conversation something on those lines Absolutely. i believe in the impact of instantaneous conversations rather than rehearsed uh, protocol i always believe in uh, creating uh-huh. something on the spot that creates that aha moment that wow factor <laughs> <laughs> absolutely otherwise the pura script hi lagta na proper ha bahut zyada phir wo poetry nahi aati wo stories nahi aati beech mein aur kya aur phir lehron ki baatein kahan ho pati hai kya baat kya baat but on this note i just want to mention that uh, from the behalf of all the listeners who listen to this conversation who will be listening to the podcast they will be getting a lot of things back with them and they will be working on that so thank you so much for sharing your experience it was wonderful such a joy vicky thank you so much and i just like to say always strive seek find and never yield and this comes from ulysses one of my favorite poems um just something that mu- one must go by everyone for that matter thank you so much vicky for making thank this thank you so much thank you you're welcome for giving us so much of uh, you know so many moments to actually feel grateful I can oh, feel that you're thinking about a lot of things right now. That's wonderful. Oh, you're absolutely right. You're just one step ahead. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Uvashi. Have a good day. Have a great day. I'll see you later. Take care.